Okay, this tutorial will cover linear regression, mediation and moderation analysis and it's pretty much the same what I showed in our workshop class. It's basically I recorded it so that you could have it so you could look at it in your own time and because linear regression, mediation and moderation will form part of your assignment, it's very important that you get it and you understand the steps. Um, to take in SPSS to analyze your data. So um, what we're going to do is just what we did in the workshop um, and um, this is the file for multiple linear regression so going to the website will allow you to download the files as usually. So for the first exercise we need S, um, LSEG um, all groups so um, going to our website S all groups download save and here we go our file should download in a second Okay, here we go. So we have our file uh, where we have age, financial stability or security, don't remember. Oh, we don't even have labels to it. Okay, so we have age, financial, um, let me pick on it what we have there. Um, financial security, health, uh, uh, quantity of social interactions and life satisfaction and also we have groups to um, which groups participants belong to. Uh, I don't precisely remember uh, what are the different groups but um, it doesn't really matter. We know there are three groups and on some variable they define them in three groups. So, um, what we're interested in is in how age, uh, financial security, uh, health, quantity of social interaction can predict life satisfaction. Um, when we talk about the relationship and prediction, we um, need to run a correlation and regression analysis. So, um, because in contrast to ANOVA and t-test, um, regression and correlation study the relationships and over t-test study mean differences here we're not interested in the differences of life satisfaction depending on which group you belong to here we're interested how other variables that are on a scale can predict life satisfaction so depending what age you are can we predict how satisfied you are with your life so to do that, we'll go to analyze and the first analysis we want to run is the correlation because if you have no relationship between the variables, it's, it's meaningless to put the prediction line because without the relationship, you can't form the prediction. So we'll just go to bivariate and we put all our variables of interest in the variable table. Here you have person correlation chosen by default and um, it's run on a parametric, uh, um, it's a parametric uh, test. Spearman is the correlation as well, but it's a non-parametric test. So um, here we use Pearson. Um, options, um, well, you as always choose means and standard deviation. Continue um, and uh, nothing really else you need to choose. Everything else is chosen for you. Press OK and here we have our descriptive statistics with means for age, financial security, health, uh, quantity of social intera interaction and life satisfaction. Um, and when you look at the means it's always helpful to know um, on what scale were the variables measured. You have the scales of the measured variable in um, your lecture slides and I'm just trying to find them unsuccessfully um, but yeah check in your lecture slides uh, that should be quite uh, clear okay there we go um, 
financial security was measured on a scale from 1 to 45 so and we have mean of 23 health was measured on scale from 1 to 30 and we have mean of 13 quantity of social interaction was measured on scale from 1 to 14 we have 16 and life satisfaction was also measured on 1 to 14 we have 16 um, for instance um, one of the groups uh, um, on uh, the Thursday group um, you guys had uh, a variable where um, in a task with an over you had uh, repeated measures and the variable was measured on a different scales and you have to center the variable um, in uh, regression you don't it doesn't really matter if they are measured on the same scale or not so let's have a look at our correlation um, here we go uh, with the life satisfaction we have age correlating positively uh, financial security correlating positively health correlating positively and quantity of social interactions correlated positively so we know that they are all correlated and the financial security life satisfaction showed to be the strongest showed the strongest correlation coefficient out of all those variables so um, in order for us to see if we can predict uh, life satisfaction knowing age financial security health and quantity of social interaction we need to run the regression so go to analyze regression linear here we go so our dependent variable is life satisfaction if you perform multiple regression You'll just put all your independent variables. We'll leave group out for now. So we'll put all our independent variables in one block. So block one of one, all variables are there. We use enter method um, because here you have stepwise, removal, backwards, forward. But as we covered it in the lecture, um, they're not really a wise choice when running the regression. So what we're interested in here um, probability entry at 0.5 um, uh, well nothing really we need to change in here plots uh, uh, you could plot your um, regression but um, we won't look at it now you could also look at the standardized residuals histogram and normal probability plots when you test one of your assumptions so we won't um, cover it at the moment uh, our options already did it. statistics um, here you'll get the estimate you can ask for the confidence interval uh, in linear regression confidence interval will represent um, as uh, with what uh, with 90 95 percent confidence interval would represent that with 95 percent uh, confidence you can say that your regression line will fit between the lower and and the upper bounds uh, you can run the case-wise diagnostic from here which is one of them which is needed for testing one of your assumptions you can also request uh, descriptive statistics uh, uh, collinearity diagnostic part and partial correlations something we touched on is when you exclude uh, um, uh, one variable from either another uh, predictor and uh, criteria um, and the dependent variable or um, whether you exclude it only from the predictor and not from the dependent variable so that will determine part and partial correlation our square change well we're not really going to get anything from choosing it in a multiple regression so we'll just continue okay so this is our regression output we get our descriptive statistics um, we also get the correlation so but the correlation table looks slightly different it's actually the same table it just separates in a correlation coefficient significance and number of participants where before it would give you correlation significance and number of participants in one square so that's the only difference it's exactly the same table um, this one is our model um, summary table which has a quantity of social interaction health uh, um, financial security and age entered all together and it also tells us our dependent variable is life satisfaction uh, model summary in here we have our correlation of uh, our variables with 
our predictors with the dependent variable and we have this value squared which gives us r square um, if you put this value in the percentages it would be 45.4 percent of variance our four variables accounting in life satisfaction however it's better to use adjusted r square because it's adjusts that value and it's always well maybe not always but usually i only saw lower than i just r just adjusted r square is lower than r squared because it takes that into account the number of variables entered in the model as well as the number of participants ANOVA will basically tell you if your model is significant so it's um, like testing the main effect of the model and in here we have our coefficients which we're interested in and standardized coefficient better this one gives you values um, the way you look at them is for instance one standard deviation increase in age with the result at 0.349 increase in our life satisfaction however unstandardized coefficient is hard to interpret because as we know they were all on a different scale and we didn't do to the scale uh, we didn't do anything to the scale we did not standardize it because we automatically get standardized coefficients better and it's transfers it it transfers all the variables into standardized variables so now we can have a comparison between them so we can see that the age um, and even stronger than age is health uh, predicting life satisfaction but all of our predictors are significant so you this one is the basic multiple regression if you want to do a hierarchical regression uh, you will follow the same procedure is just to enter the variables in two or more blocks so if we we'll reset everything at the moment and let's say our life satisfaction is still a dependent variable our age financial security and health will put in the first block because we possibly, let's say, we want to control for age, financial security and health um, and see how much variance uh, quantity of social interaction accounts for in life satisfaction independently of age, financial security and health. So we're pushing out uh, those variables from quantity of uh, um, social interaction. So by pressing next we can enter quantity of social interaction into the next block now in here you are interested not in this one in statistics and you are interested in uh, r square change this is choosing r square change will give you um, information how much variance does the second step of the model accounts for additionally to the first step of the model so continue and uh, okay there we go so regression table looks similar but now it shows us that we have two models so we have in the first step our three variables and the quantity of social interaction was entered as a second block this is the model summary where we can see our r square change so what does that give you is that uh, r squared in the second block represents a sum of r square change for model one and r square change for model two so 0.415 plus 0 0.039 will be 0 0.545 Four. yeah and in here it will tell you if your addition um, on the second step accounts for a significant portion of variance so our first three variables account for a significant portion of uh, variance in life satisfaction account for 41.5 percent and our quantity of social interaction account for additional 3.9 percent of variance in life satisfaction that was a significant so ANOVA gives you the results for the two models and 
here the coefficients is what you're interested in. So again, standardized coefficients and we have model one, age, financial security and health, all of them significant. Now, quantity of social interaction, when we add it up, it's also significant predictor of life satisfaction. And uh, when you report your um, regression, if you perform hierarchical regression, you have to report standardized coefficients for, bo for both blocks, for model one and for, um, for block one and for block two. So if we look at our um, exercises, so this is the table for your correlation and this would be the table for your regression where you have um, unstandardized coefficient um, gosh, arrow uh, oh, it's completely escaped my head standard arrow uh, of the coefficient and then you have standardized beta coefficient and you'll put the stars where they are significant so um, this is the output you would get uh, now um, let's move on and look at our grouping variable so going back to our data file we see that we have groups and oh, we did not record them as anything um, we have three groups in total um, as I covered in the lecture when you have a nominal variable um, which would be a group belongingness you have to dummy code the variable now how you dummy code the variable go to transport in transport menu you actually do everything you need to do to variable. You can compute the variable, you can record into same variable, into different variable. So all the variable transformation will be done from transform box. Now we need to we want to record it into the different variable. So here we go. This is the record into different variable box. We'll put our group as the input variable and outcome variable let's say oh i now remembered what the group was it was never married uh, uh, single um, and uh, m or with the partner without the partner that's now i remember what it's responded to uh, let me just dig it out okay there we go uh, So the first group was with the partner, always single, previously with the partner, now single. Um, let's just add it to our group variable so that we'll remember. So um, value one was with partner, oops, uh, now yeah, two was uh, single, and um, three was um, previously with the partner, now single, previously partner, now single. Okay, so now we have our variable coded and it will be easier for us to remember and understand what we are doing. So transform variable, record into different variable. To do the dummy coding, we choose group. And let's say our first group, we want to put uh, um, dummy one and it would be partner. We can call it like that so we can know that the dummy one would respond to people having a partner. Now, old and new values. So, previously one was with the partner and because we have a dummy variable for partner, we'll leave one as the value. Now, in group two singles, they are not with the partner, so they are zero. And as well, previously with the partner, which is group three, 
they are not with the partner now, so they also get to zero. And continue uh, and change. Okay. Here, looking at our data file, there we go. So, dummy partner, everyone who had one have one now, they still remained one, and everyone with the twos and threes have zeros. Now we need to record a second dummy variable because the way you record the dummy variable you take the number of, of the groups in your grouping variable minus one. So we have three groups minus one, two, so we need two dummy variables. Transform, uh, record into the different variables, so reset, um, we'll put group still and we have it as dummy two and let's say it's single. That's what we, dummy foo 2 will represent groups of singles. All the new values, so group number 1 with the partner, they are not single. Add. Group number 2 are single and therefore they are single. So we give them that 1 to identify that they are in a single group. And now group 3 are previously with the partner now single, so they still get 0. Continue, change, OK. So there we go, our next dummy variable. So what we have to represent belonging to group 1, they'll have to score on a dummy 1, 1 and dummy 2, 0. And in group 2 should score 0 on dummy 1 and 1 on dummy 2. Now the third group has 0, 0. And it's also refers to as reference group. When we run our regression and look at the output, we'll know what, uh, why we need the reference group. As well, because dummy variables, they correspond to one variable group, you can't enter them in a different steps of hierarchical regression. It just doesn't make sense. Even though we separated one grouping variable into two dummy variables, the dummy variables will go together. So, let's say we want to run our regression and we want to see if uh, uh, belonging to or the status of the relationship has any effect on life satisfaction in addition to other variables because in a previous um, a regression that's just reset it in a previous uh, stud, um, analysis we found that all of our predictive variables had a significant accounted for significant portion of variance in life satisfaction. So let's see if the group accounts for any additional variance. So we'll put all our uh, psychological predictive variables into independent block and in the next block, so putting them in the first block we control for their variance, we put this two other variables. Now going to Statistics are square changed because we want to see the percentage of variance our group accounts for. We can also ask for descriptives, but let's not clutter our output. Okay. There we go. So our, again, output um, quantity of social interaction, health, uh, financial security and age in block one and our group variable uh, which is um, uh, relationship status is in um, model two. So when we look at the model summary what we see that again just as before our psychological variables together accounted for 45.4 percent of variance and it was significant. Now Having a partner or being single or now having a partner and being single accounts for additional 7.3% of variance, which is significant. ANOVA says everything is significant, so we're pretty happy. Now, standardized coefficients better. We'll see that this is just what we obtained before from our... Uh, multiple regression and the last step of a hierarchical regression with the data. Now, having um, relationship status in the block 2, it tells us how much it accounts for in the block 2. And we see that dummy 1 and dummy 2 account for sig first is accounted for significant portion of ours, but now the way you can interpret this uh, better 
is whether dummy one with the partner is different from our reference group. And our reference group had zero, zero on both of the dummy variables. So the uh, reference group is previously with the partner now single. So they are different and singles with previously with the partner now single are also different. So, um, but I mean, it's one of the ways of, um, well, it's probably the only way of reporting the um, dummy coded variables when you look at the group membership in a regression. But the most what we're interested in is that the relationship status accounts for 7.3% of variance. Okay, so this is the uh, multiple regression. Now, let's move to mediation and moderation. So, no, we don't want to save anything. Close, yes, no. Uh, now, uh, Mediator and moderator. Let's start with the mediator, MS mediator. So we need to download that file. MS mediator, download. Oh, okay, it's loading. Gosh, my, my SPSS does not behave particularly well. So, um, the example we looked at the lecture was, um, uh, let's find that example. Oh, that's, why is that a, uh, are we, no, that's a moderate. Okay. Oh, no, 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 this is not the uh, lecture. This is your one of your exercises. Sorry. Uh, no, I don't want... Oh. Yes, I want to close it. I don't want to save anything. Uh, we need Howell. Howell, Howell. Um, how will mediate There we go. Now I recognize the data set. Okay, so um, there we go. We the task. Well, the question is: uh, Does uh, maternal care predict self-efficacy? And if the relationship between maternal care and self-efficacy is um, mediated by self-esteem? Um, if you read the examples from the lecture, it will refresh your memory. Um, so let's have a look first. Before we run any mediation, moderation, regression, as usually, we just want to see their relationship. Bavarian correlation. From here, choose our self-esteem, self-efficacy, nothing else to choose. Um, correlation. Uh, we see that with a five-month self-efficacy, self-esteem correlated strongly and maternal care slightly weaker. Plus, esteem and maternal care correlated quite strongly. So, um, following um, uh, Baron and Kenny um, conditions for testing mediation and moderation, what we need is uh, IV um, and DV, our predictor and our dependent variable, um, to have a significant relationship. And also our IV, which is maternal care, should have a significant relationship with self-esteem. And that's what we're actually seeing here. 
yeah and our mediator which is self-esteem should have a significant relationship with self-efficacy so we satisfy two of the criteria and uh, now let's uh, run the mediation <laughs> To run mediation and moderation that we'll cover in a second is the same, you'll go to linear regression, you'll put your month self-efficacy in a dependent variable, maternal care you put in the independent variable, click next and you'll put self-esteem. We covered it in more details at the lecture why we put them in this particular order. The purpose of this video is just to show you the steps. Um, now. Um, Oh, I always click options. Statistics, R square change, continue, OK. What we get is our variables, the stages at which they were entered. We get summary model, so we see that model 1, which is first our maternal care, accounted for 7.4% in um, self-efficacy. And um, the second step accounted for additional 8.7%. Uh, both of them were significant, and that's the same what ANOVA shows us. So let's look at the coefficients. So in here, how we can see that it's a mediating relationship. Maternal care predicts significantly uh, self-efficacy. What that means, at one standard deviation change in maternal care, self-efficacy increases by 0.271 yeah now if we look at the second step where self-esteem was added maternal care became non-significant so one change in mater in maternal one standard deviation change in maternal care resulted at 0.142 increase in self-efficacy and this increase was not significant however self-esteem is significant and it's actually much uh, uh, the increase in self-efficacy is higher than with um, than from maternal care uh, so one standard deviation change in self-efficacy results 0.32 change in life satisfaction um, when I say uh, when I look at standard um, coefficients that's assuming that other independent variable or other predictors remain constant which is uh, usually not the case because independent variables themselves correlate with each other but this is the estimations we're getting so because maternal care became non-significant we can conclude that the relationship between maternal care and self-efficacy was fully mediated by self-esteem um, in your exercises that uh, you needed to do, it's not always the case. Sometimes you can have partial mediation and you'll have to check if your mediation is significant using Sobel's test. I will probably give you the link to the video um, that uh, Andy Field shot explaining uh, the process model, um, that the one that I'm mainly using. Um, if you're interested, you could look at what he's got to say. Now, this is everything there is to um, mediation. Let's have a look at the moderation. So, moderate, and we need, um, oops, um, how will hassle moderate? Um, Powell Hassel Moderator, downloading the file. So, Moderator is slightly different from the Mediator. So, what we have uh, uh, with our Moderator, um, the way to look at it is the variable that affects the relationship between our predictor variable and our criterion variable, or our dependent variable. So, um, moderator is like interaction effect in ANOVA. The 
and you pretty much test the moderation in the same way as you test interaction in an ova. So here I'm just quickly going to give you the steps for that. First, uh, let's run the correlation for all our variables. By variate, uh, we put our variables together, run our correlation, and this is what we get. Hassle supports symptoms, and in here we see that symptoms is our independent variable, or oh, our dependent variable, sorry. Um, and support and hassle are our independent variables. So, in order for us to test the moderation, the moderator, we need to center our predictive variables, and then not center. Sorry. Oh yes, yeah, center. Uh, sorry, I've been shooting too many videos today. So we need to center our predictive variables and then have a product of multiply centered variables and that will give us our moderator. To center your variable, you need to, to calculate means of your two variables. So our predictive variables are hassles and support. So let's calculate descriptive statistic. Descriptives, hassle, support, options we just need means and standard deviation we don't even need standard deviation but by default let's do that so we have mean for uh, for hassle is 170.196 and for support is 28.964 to compute a centered variable you'll go to transform compute the variable and put centered let's say hassle let's start with hassles Centered hassles equals to hassles minus hassles mean, and we can see that our hassles mean is 170.196. Okay, and we should get our centered variable in our data set, centered hassles. So 100, 176 minus 170.196 will equal to um, point to 5.8. So this is basically how central centered hassles is calculated. Now let's do the same with the support. Transform compute variable set central support. Um, so we put support minus uh, mean of the support is 28.96, um, I think, 964. Okay, so here we go, we'll get the two centered variables. Now to calculate the moderator or to to calculate the interaction effect we'll need to, a product of those two variables so we can compute the variable and we can call it central hassle central support and what we do to calculate the interaction is central hassles times central support okay so now if we look at our data set, we have our moderator or our interaction effect of hassles times support. Now, to run the regression and to check the moderation between hassle, um, whether um, support has a moderating effect on the relationship between hassles and symptoms, we'll need to run analyze regression linear we have our symptoms as a dependent variable hassle and support will go to the independent variable and that will give us sort of main effect for hassle and main effect for support and next we'll enter our interaction which also give us whether support uh, whether support is the moderator in our relationship between hassle and symptoms so um Statistics are square change because we want to see if our moderator or our interaction account for any significant variance in uh, um, 
our dependent variable, which is symptoms, and we press OK. So this is the output we get. First model, two variables centered support and hassle. So the main effect of support and hassle accounted for 33% or 33.4% of variance in symptoms, and it was significant. Our interaction between hassles and support accounted for additional significant 5.4% of variance. Looking at the coefficients, we have hassles and support, which in here support was not significant. Yeah, but now when we enter our interaction term of hassle and support, our moderator, support as the moderator into the model, it's become significant. So what's happening? Hassle affects symptoms, but de depending on whether you get support or you don't get support or whether you get high support or low support will determine if your, the number of hassles you have will affect the number of symptoms you show. So this is initially the moderating effect. And because this centered hassle support variable is significant, we can conclude that our support is the moderator in the relationship between hassle and symptoms. Okay, um, that is it uh, for this analysis.